Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. And of course, you can see that Art Kirsch and I are with our favorite medical doctor, Dr. Liz Lister. Thank you for joining us again. You're well, my pleasure. Hi, Dr. Liz. How you doing? Doing well. How are you? Good. good. But uh, we, we have a lot of special guests and they are really chock full of knowledge in their areas. Okay, but your area being medicine and well-being and what have you, um, it seems that um, uh, everybody is dieting, whether it be the first of the year or sometime in the middle of the year and so on and so forth. And what seems to really kill everybody, I know it does uh, me from time to time, uh, maybe I'll have a good run of two or three months, but there are certain foods that maybe because when I was a kid, we had Swiss cheese all the time, the blue cheese. Uh, I've always had a, a cheese addiction before I be, became a, a vegetarian and sort of not doing cheese anymore. But cheese is always uh, something that is like, um, uh, I, I guess I've never had a drug addiction, but if I did, it seems pretty close to it. Do people really get addicted to foods that make it difficult to, to cut them out? Absolutely. This has actually been shown on brain studies. So we'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. Mm. What I wanted to start us off by talking about is our design. Our design as human beings is to eat the entire bag of chips or to mm. eat the entire tub of ice cream. It's not, it, it is genuinely at the brain level, the same as other types of addictions. Okay. Did, and, that, did that come from times when uh, before we, there was a, a, enough food around that people ate whatever they could because they might not be able to get food for a, a week or two or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. As recently as 10,000 years ago, that design served us really well. Two things about it. Number one, what you were just saying is the food scarcity and the intense activity involved in locating, processing, storing, and everything that we had to do to keep a food supply. So that's exactly right. And the signals that are installed in our hard wiring as human beings, how to tell when berries are ripe, that they're beautiful, bright colors, how to tell when something is good for us to eat or not good for us to eat. It was based on how it looked, how it smelled, how it tasted, okay? And those are all important cues that we have in our biology. Now what we have are dedicated full-time food scientists and marketers who take advantage of our brain's hard wiring and they build those cues into everything. Brightly colored packaging, especially to appeal to children and get them started young, get them hooked young. Sure. Mm -hmm. All those sure, add salt, add sugar. Yeah. That's add, right. It'll help sell the product, yeah. That's yeah. exactly right. That's, and, I, and I learned recently that they also can hide different flavors in foods. So for example, there are some cereals that you would think of as sugary cereals, but they actually have more salt than sugar. But they hide the salty flavor so they're just as addicting as a big bag of chips because of the salt component, not the sugar component. So the food scientists are unfortunately really earning their keep these days. Interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. But there, I assume, like Art's case, there are some natural addictions. We, we just, he just likes cheese, you know, whether that was in his genes or whether as a kid he just ate a lot of cheese and now he loves it i don't know but i, I think we all have some favorite food well i think we? part of it is being associated with uh, a time like for me uh, growing up and uh, my father uh, loved cheese as well and so it was part emulating i mean uh, i also like uh, sauerkraut now a lot, a lot of people i know don't like it will never taste it if they see it on the table they'll push it away but it was something that was served at my house a lot, and it was a loving environment. And 
you sort of associate those flavors with, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think anybody, anybody on their first taste of beer isn't like, mm, this is terrific. You acquire a taste for it based upon the environment that you're in. Uh, so does, I assume that it's, it's triggering some of the same things in your brain that trigger Absolutely. addiction to alcohol and other things. Indeed, indeed. However, what's funny is of all the foods that we've talked about so far, we haven't really touched on the top two addicting foods that are all around us today, and those are sugar and flour. Hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, and I'm not the only person to describe it like this, but I describe it as these were innocent plants from which you can derive addicting powders. There are usually four when you read about them. One is heroin, which comes from the beautiful little poppy plant. One is cocaine, which comes from also just a, a shrub, easy to get the leaves. They're fine. If you chew on coca leaves, you're not going to get what the effect that you get from the when the powder is made from it and extracted and just gotten down to that little minor amount of it, but so much more powerful. And then sugar, right? You don't get a sugar rush if you chew on a thing of sugar cane, a plant. All right. And same with flour. You really can't do much gnawing on some wheat that grew out of the ground. Flour, that, but, all the things that uh, you just mentioned seem to make a lot of sense from an addiction standpoint, but flour? What's about absolutely. flour? Absolutely. So, so sure. the issue is the refining of it. That's where we get into trouble. And we get to, you know, a lot of people craving sugary treats, or it, it, it can vary. Like you said, you mentioned dairy related, uh, of course, alcohol. So I'm not talking so much about that right now, because those are things that you can abstain from, but we can't abstain from food. We do have to eat. So yeah. nowadays, the problem is the ultra processing and the other alterations that the food scientists are putting into place. So there's MRI studies of people's brains while they're eating these types of foods or sometimes even thinking about <laughs> a sugary treat or something like that. It's the same as the other as the area of the brain. It's the area of the brain that has the dopamine release that reward center of the brain, that is what lights up. It's very so fascinating. eating ice cream can trigger an MRI result not unlike a heroin hit. Correct. That's exactly right. Wow. So, yeah, so what's, what's, what's a poor defensive, defenseless consumer like us do? Do we have to go to cliffsides of Malibu or one of those fancy retreats to beat our, uh, our, our flower addiction. And we're not talking about daisies here. We're talking about uh, the stuff in bread and, and baked goods. Right. Well, so what, 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 what is a poor defensive consumer like uh, John and I supposed to do about it? How, how can we fight it? All right, I, got some, I have some tips for you, for you guys and for all of our listeners. We have to, one of the things we have to do is take steps to control our environment so that we can retrain our brains. Our brains may or may not change. So what can we do? For one thing, we can eat from smaller plates. This is going to help control the brain's perception of the food quantity. There's studies that show when you serve more food, when you serve a larger amount of food on a bigger plate, people will eat more. And so this is number one way. This is one of the lists that I'll give you to help minimize the impact of these kinds of addictive foods. The second is eating at regular intervals. Nowadays we get busy and all of a sudden we're starving. And so our brain wants us to have something that's going to give a quick sugar rush, sugar influx into our bloodstream. So what you want to do is you want to eat at regular intervals. It varies, depends who you ask. I personally like about a three-hour interval. That's a good balance between letting your body digest the last time you ate 
and not letting yourself get too, too hungry before you eat again. So mm -hmm. regular intervals of food eating. That's a second tip. A third is increasing the amount of protein that you eat. Think about all those addictive kinds of foods, a cookie or a cupcake or all the things in the Starbucks case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're not very high in protein. And that keeps you going back for more. All right, so eating more, having some protein. Instead of just an apple, have some almond butter with the apple. That's going to help the brain feedback and the brain sense of satiety or being satisfied and not being hungry and not being craving for whatever the food is that that you normally crave yeah also along with that is more fiber all right and this is where i recommend that people eat some fruit or vegetables rather than blending them into a smoothie because you get rid of the fiber structure you, you would never eat all the things that you can pour into a smoothie and then you've got one cup and you can drink it. If you were to sit with just all those vegetables and fruits that you just tossed into the blender, you probably wouldn't eat that many and you'd get more fiber. Right? So that's, that's a tip. That's good advice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And last but not least is we were referring to this earlier in some of the foods we were talking about. And it, the, the term that we use is energy density energy density okay. and so high energy density not is not so good all right oh. so the classic example is peanut butter peanut butter unfortunately my husband has a little bit of a weakness for peanut butter so one tablespoon of peanut butter only weighs about an ounce about 33 grams or so but it has 190 calories so it's calories divided by grams and how much it weighs in grams. And the higher the energy density, it's not so good. We want lower energy density. So for example, vegetables, everything, what I just said about the smoothie, okay? Uh, eating those vegetables, kale, lettuce, spinach, those leafy greens, they don't weigh a lot. All right, for the calories that you're getting. So you're getting a much lower energy density. So you're basically so, talking about uh, eating them in their natural state, whether they're heated or not, uh, as opposed to, uh, I know that uh, uh, I had an uncle who used to make, uh, he had a, a blender and he would make celery uh, uh, a juice in the morning. Yes. And what he did was he, it always seemed as if he was putting tons and tons of good stuff into a dense, solution and getting rid of some of the value of it, like the fiber, okay? And he gave that yeah. up after two or three years. Same thing with orange juice. One orange is not bad, but orange juice concentrates all the sugar. Uh, Absolutely. That's in, in 30 oranges and puts it into one glass, that kind of thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly right. So all of those help retrain the brain. So when we're talking about food addiction, we're talking about patterns, or I, I refer, I think of it as tracks like a track, literally like a track in the road. The more you drive on this, like in a dirt road, the more you drive on it, the deeper the tracks. And yeah. we can lay down new tracks. We can affect how our brains feel based on the impact of the foods that we eat. So less processed food, more in its more natural state. I like how you said that. That's a good way to put that. More protein, smaller quantities. So we seem to find these themes, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, obviously, John and I don't have any problem with food addiction. We are, we can handle it because we are fully addicted to the foods that we love. So we're good at yeah. that. Yeah, we didn't mention my addiction to hot dogs. I, I we skipped <laughs> over that somewhere. But mm. They've got a pretty much all that bad stuff in them. Uh, well, what kind of hot dogs, John? Nathan's oh, uh, I'm, I'm looking for peanut butter hot dogs. Next. Oh, oh. Well, well, wow. In the recent news, wasn't there something about that? Uh, a peanut butter hot dogs? That's new. <laughs> a new addiction. So uh, if people want to find out more about this, do you have some of this information on your website, uh, Dr. Liz? I have not written a lot about this just yet, but I will. Okay, people can always what, stay tuned on my blog page. And so uh, right now people can, if they want to get a, a fuller description of this, is any particular place you would have them go or just Google food addiction? 
There's so much information out there. I would look up food susceptibility. That's kind of a new phrase that's being used. Mm. So we don't think of it, people don't usually think of it as, sometimes people do. They say, oh, I'm addicted. Like you started out talking about cheese. Usually people use the word cravings, but lately the, the phrase is food susceptibility. There's quizzes that you can take. There's a variety of different ones. Mm. And I'll make a point of adding more of that to my website down the road. But there's a lot of information out there. So we've distilled it today into some easy to remember tips for people. Yeah, I think yeah, probably they're, the, they're good tips. And, and one excellent. of the most important things is that, you know what, uh, there's nothing that you told us today that isn't new. We probably just haven't thought about before. Uh, but we know that uh, uh, marketers, uh, particular of, uh, of uh, packaged uh, goods, uh, do everything they can to make it look better. But there are also the the uh, people behind the scenes are throwing stuff in it, like salt, uh, yeah. to uh, right. uh, make you crave it more. So uh, it, it's a good alert for us and for uh, our entire audience. So let's pay attention and live longer, healthier lives. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you, Dr. Liz. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.